And we're back for another episode of Should You Read It, that show where I give you my pros, cons, and first impressions on the latest books releasing. It's me, your guide, Holly, and today we're talking about Son of the Storm, which releases on May 11th. So I was able to get my hands on this beautiful copy from Orbit Books, who are allowing me to review this one early for you, and I already have a lot to say about this one. When I first saw the cover launch, my immediate impression was, yes, this is the exact breath of fresh air as FF needs. Fantasy books have had us visiting many fictional worlds for decades now, but Son of the Storm takes a refreshing and more detailed approach. This is an absolutely massive story, and it's hard to speak concisely on it, but I'm going to try my best to give you the gist of the book with no spoilers and what I think it's accomplished. First thing, I really liked it. I don't want to be all cliche and corny and be like, Orbit has done it again, but uh, yeah, they published a good book yet again. The book reads like a collection of interlock stories set in a civilization in crisis. And what I mean by that is it's following eight perspectives at one point or another, and it integrates all of these characters' experiences neatly into a greater framework, ultimately grounding itself in the age-old storyline clash between earnest good and utter evil, combined with ancient forbidden magic. I mean, you just don't know who the heck to trust. The story begins with an ominous prologue as it sets the stakes very high very quickly as you learn that the character Oki is in the dealing with the continent's biggest secret, and if it got out, every everyone is doomed. It's too grave to consider the alternative. There are so many elusive layers of detail to sift through. You're told the political situation of the world and its inner workings for a sizable chunk in the beginning, but once you get past its dense first few chapters, the story proceeds in a frantic rush that mostly engages the senses. The author does not mind taking his time to slowly flush out everything, so you really need to take a step back after every chapter or so to soak it all in. It is dense, it's weighty, it is meticulously constructed and features endless detail, but please do not take that negatively. There's a whole world of wonder here and it is beautiful. I mean, if you're looking for a new world to scour every inch of, to read about some of the most detailed history I've ever read in a novel, this is the world to spend your time in. It strives for realism, defying the Western belief as one definitive version of a story. This is pure African goodness. I really hope this book inspires people to read more about pre-colonial African history. Though I would not consider this an adventure fantasy, it's heavily focused on politics, a scheming government, bringing power back to the citizens, but the author still manages to create a vibrant world, especially with how different each region is. The continent the book is set in is divided not only by a border between mainland and desert land, but also by a caste system depending on how dark your skin color is, such as low brown and high brown. The farther away from the mainland you are, the less pigmented your skin is and you are judged unfairly. In fact, for a lighter skin to cross the border, they are put through a rigorous induction program, and that speaks volumes for our society today, which is anger-inducing. Well, suddenly this border closes, no one can get in or out, and rumors spread that a yellow skin has infiltrated the mainland, and they should not exist. A yellow skin has not been seen in over 100 years. And well, they are deemed absolutely barbaric, believing in or not believing in what you're taught about history is really important in this story, as scriptures are very much manipulated, and one of the main characters struggles with that as he's a scholar with low brown skin, so he's heavily misrepresented. And we also have Eshmi, who might be my favorite character. She is fierce, knows what she wants, and she will get what she wants. Her battle with her emotions, or lack thereof, I should say, is so interesting. She takes morally great characters to the next level. So with all of that chaos, we also have a mysterious magical mineral that resurfaces. And though it will cause your body to slowly decay, you can command or possess some form of magic, like water or fire. Now I did find myself itching for more in some chapters and found my attention drifting away in others. Some days I could pound out 100 pages, and other days I could only read like 20 or 30 pages because some chapters were much slower than others. So I 
think I had some pacing issues and it really does help that the book is sectioned out in parts so you get the idea when the story is about to morph so keep that in mind. Second is for some characters putting aside character growth. I felt like there were some discrepancies in their personalities. I went from really liking one to not enjoying their perspective as much later on because of some dialogue choices and the way they suddenly react to things. And lastly though I mentioned how vibrant this world sounds, it's kind of a lot of telling and not showing as of the first book. For example, all the perspectives we follow are pretty much together, so we can just hope the sequel will be more physically visiting all of these really cool locations on the map. Overall, I had a really great time with this book. Even when it was at its most challenging, I was intrigued, interested, and hesitant to put it down. If you're tired of reading recycled fantasy, Son of the Storm is something different, worth checking out. It is no cookie cutter fantasy, that's for sure. Reading the book is like a transporting experience and with a good deal of shocks and jolts that really brings the narrative to fulfillment. But of course, this is Should You Read it. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and my personal opinion. Now I want to hear yours down below in the comments. I want to know what you're thinking, if this helped you in some way on deciding if this enormous story is for you. And if I did, giving this video a thumbs up helps me a lot. Thank you so much. Subscribe if you want to. I upload every single week and more episodes of Should You Read It to Come, including The Black Tongue Thief and For the Wolf. So look forward to those and until we meet again, happy reading.